Good morning, Composition 3. Uh, it has been a while, and actually I've never completely caught up like I said I would. So your lectures have been coming on Thursday or Friday every week, sometimes Saturday. So this isn't much of a push for you. However, you may have wondered until I sent that message what was going on. But basically, my wireless microphone malfunctioned partway through a lecture last Monday, and uh, I was waiting for it to be replaced or repaired, but nothing has arrived yet, so we can't get too far behind, obviously. So um, we're having a Zoom lecture next week, so there's this week, this lecture, which is last week's, and then there's another video lecture this week, and then next Friday, we have a Zoom lecture, okay? So there'll be today's, and then later this week, a second video lecture, and then after that, we have a Zoom lecture scheduled, which is good because it's been a while since I've seen you. And um, <clears throat> you may have some questions about things, how things are going. I have to send you your grade for your first assignment. That's on the way. Um, I noticed that I didn't update the homework for last week on the website, which is my fault. So if most of you did it anyway, uh, I think that's why I thought I uploaded or I, I posted, but it looks like I didn't. So if you didn't do your homework last week, you may hand it in this week because I didn't put it on the website. So I will fix that. Uh, and I would like you um, just to keep following along <clears throat> until we get caught up here. Um, I'm not going to assign any homework today, um, but in the next video lecture, I will. <clears throat> so that will be this week's assignment, not... Uh, it'll be the assignment for next week, okay? So you don't have any homework due this Friday. Don't worry about that. All right, <clears throat> so um, we're going to do opinion um, paragraphs today. Um, we're moving pretty slowly through the textbook, but chapter five is a little bit less than halfway through. Uh, we are going to jump around a little bit and skip some stuff because we don't have time to talk about everything in the textbook. And there's certain things that I want you to know. Um, and the textbook was not written by me. So the course kind of follows my pattern, not exactly how the, the textbook writes it. Um, I've graded half of your assignments, I would say, and some some people are, everybody in this class, this is composition three, so I shouldn't be surprised. Some of you I have topped four, and I know you've gotten good grades in writing classes with me already. So <clears throat> your writing, the writing quality is quite good. Um, I would like to say though that we have a grade curve still, um, Luckily, the worst thing about Composition 3 is it's pretty competitive. Uh, so usually the number of A's that I, I would like to give uh, is pretty tight. But the worst thing is the C grades, where I think most of the students deserve a B. But I have to hand out 30% C's. I have no choice. And... Uh, because of the coronavirus and us doing this online, I don't have to do that. So the best thing about this class this semester, honestly, is that all of you can get a B. And in Composition 3, that's I think that's more likely the case than any other class I teach, is that there's a lot of students that I have to give C pluses to, and that's the best grade I can give them. So if you study hard, and you do your homework and you write well, there's no reason you can't get a B plus, at least in this class. 50% of you can get an A. So that's good news. Um, <clears throat> so you have to listen very carefully to certain things because that might be the difference between you getting a B and an A. Um, when everybody's ability is a little bit higher, then the, the um, valuations become tighter and I have to make decisions based on what you would probably consider small mistakes. But I have to decide somehow, and that's the way it's going to be. So 
Uh, like it or not, that's what we have to deal with. So this is one of these things. Uh, my professors didn't want to know my opinion um, ever. Let me explain, because they like you to ask questions and they like to, you to participate. But in, in academic writing, giving your opinion, uh, is, it's almost like it's too polite, right? And it's too personal. So good academic writing at a certain level uh, becomes detached from, from you. Um, the highest levels of academ academic writing in science or philosophy or history or English are, are not about your opinion. It's not about your reputation. The, the words themselves and the logic uh, of your writing has to do the work, not, well, Professor Sullivan is a professor, so his opinion matters, or President so-and-so said something, and he's a president, so that's important. That's what an opinion is. An opinion is something that you own and that it's yours. Um, and I, I like to know people's opinions about certain things because it makes sense, like um, food, everybody uh, everybody has a different palate and a different taste. And uh, that's one of the things that you're allowed to have your opinion about. And when you watch movies or you read books um, and you're, you have your opinion about that, about entertainment, um, all of these things are things that you can voice your opinion. I'm just saying when you want to prove something, when you want to convince somebody of something, um, and you want to have the best chance of them understanding you and being persuaded by, like I said, your logic and, and the details, then what you want to do is not have an opinion or, or just an opinion. Um, you want to build an argument. That's a much better way. So persuasion and argumentation are the key words, not opinion. But this whole paragraph is called opinion. The important thing is that you recognize what's opinion and what's not, because giving an opinion is a weak um, argument, and it's weak support for an argument, and uh, giving a fact is strong, right? So your argument is going to be a statement, and a fact is going to support the fact. The fact is going to support uh, your argument much more effectively than your opinion is. Right. So we've talked about this in composition, too. I think there's a couple of people that decided to take both at once. Usually there's a few one or two students that take composition two and composition three simultaneously. But it's, it's the same approach that I've been trying to work out with them uh, <clears throat> is that you need a specific reason and you need facts and figures and details that are connected to your statement in order to build a strong uh, paper. And you're actually gonna write a full essay at the end of this month, so we better sort this out. Um, so there's an opinion paragraph, an, ex an example, and you can clearly see um, which pieces of information um, are facts and which uh, represent ideas or beliefs um, about a particular subject. So this is how it goes. Dear editor, more people should ride bicycles into town. Now there's a grammar point there. Modal auxiliaries like should or need or have to or must. Um, those are ways of communicating um, strong feelings about, um, it's a, either an order, a recommendation, advice, um, varying degrees of strength. Um, can be modified. That's why it's called the modal auxiliary verb. Uh, it helps the verb and modifies it. It makes it stronger or, or it moderates it. So more people should ride bicycles into town represents an opinion. And that's a very, fairly strong one when you say should. Um, but if you said must, then there would be maybe a consequence or no choice. Last year, 73% of all workers drove their own car to work. Car traffic in town is terrible. Parking places are hard to find. And pollution from cars is a real problem. Citizens who want a cleaner, nicer place to live ought to try, there's the modal auxiliary again, ought to try this non-polluting form of transportation. 
Cycling is good exercise too. The city must not allow this problem to get worse. Instead, people should ride bicycles to work and school and enjoy the health benefits of daily exercise. Bill Adams, Bellingham. Right, so if you go through there, you can see numbers almost always indicate facts. So you, you can see there 73% of all workers drove their car to work. 73% is a measurement. Um, and either that, either that survey is correct or it's analyzed the data is given correctly, uh, honestly, or it's not. It's either a fact or it's a lie, one or the other. Uh, car traffic in town is terrible. That sounds like an opinion. I know it sounds like it, it, you say is, so it seems like it's a fact, but um, people from Seoul would laugh at us when we said Daejeon traffic is bad, because they do. I say, I complain. <clears throat> I say, oh man, the traffic in Daejeon's awful. I don't like driving in Korea. And then my friends in Seoul are like, ah, Jeremy, try driving in Seoul. And I say, well, I have driven in Seoul, but I'm not comparing with you. I'm just comparing with Canada where there's, you know, certainly terrible places to drive in that have brutal rush hour, like Toronto. Toronto to Niagara Falls is every day a nightmare, but there's also places where there's no rush hour, like where I grew up of only 5,000 people. So that represents an opinion. If you think it's relative, it's based on somebody's own situation, then you're, you're really, and you, if you want to express it as a fact, then you have to say it a little bit differently, right? Um, again, as a measurement of traffic, right? It, you can say something like, um, if you drive the car uh, during the day or after rush hour, it only takes you 15 minutes to drive across town. But um, traffic gets so bad when people go to work that it takes 45 minutes. Um, now you're talking about measurements and you're proving that traffic is, uh, that's not normal, that's congested, okay? so. Cycling is good exercise too. Opinion or fact, also opinion. Uh, it's not good exercise if you fall off your bicycle or if um, you don't have a good quality bicycle and you, you know, the thing, if you're a bicycle enthusiast, I briefly rode bicycles around in Korea. I, I did when I was younger too, um, but I noticed when I was, uh, I was about 30, when I was biking to Sejong and back once a week. And uh, that's a long ride. It's like, uh, maybe it's 50 or 60 kilometers round trip from where I was in Daejeon to Sejong and back. And uh, it's a couple hours. And yeah, you're, it's not the best exercise <laughs> in terms of the position you are in and you, you can be sore if you're not a young person. So if you're 50 years old or 70 years old, exercising hard on a bicycle might be bad for your posture, your back, your your legs. Um, for men, you gotta be careful as well how you ride a bicycle. These are health considerations. Good exercise is supposed to be healthy, right? So like if you go to the gym and you, and you go on the running machine or you swim or you do yoga, you know, you're not going to injure yourself and you're not going to die. But if you're riding a bicycle with no helmet, like Mr. Man on page 33, um, arguably not that good for you, right? It is, it does, it is a uh, cardiovascular activity, which would argue, you could argue is good for exercise, but you're also simultaneously putting yourself at risk. Okay, <clears throat> now on page 34, um, I would like to talk about these and do this stuff in our Zoom lecture. So if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, we have a Zoom lecture next week. So let me just, I should have called this up on my computer before, but let me just make sure that is correct.
and this is what you should always do, right? Like I'm doing, just check and see what's going on in your classes. So you know what's going on before I even say it. Okay, I found it. And yes, so today I'm doing week nine, which is last Friday, but today I'm uploading it. Again, uh, that's technical difficulties in me hoping that I would get my microphone faster. The uh, cyber lecture is open until tomorrow. So if you haven't seen this video and you've been waiting, you can do it until Tuesday night. It's still open. And this week we have a, uh, another cyber lecture, which I will record and upload by this Friday at the latest, but hopefully earlier than that. And next week, week 11, we have a Zoom lecture. And that lecture will be about this. We're going to do this page in class. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit because we have to prepare two more things. Um, there will be probably another homework assignment snuck in there somewhere. But this I would like to do in class. Um, this exercise number four on page 34 about um, whether it's a fact or opinion will appear on the exam. And um, number two is just an exercise to talk about different forms of writing, which I like to do in person. And number five is writing, um, fact and opinion, distinguishing and writing your own. Both um, four and five will be on the exam. Those types of questions will be on the exam. So we'll talk about this um, in our Zoom lecture. So we'll just skip over that page for now, and then we'll talk about it then. So don't worry about that. And I said, you don't have any homework this week. Um, the homework is for next week. <clears throat> so um, that homework will be assigned in the video lecture I do in the next few days. Okay, so for now, sit tight. No homework. Um, we will do an essay outline. Um, so that Zoom lecture will we'll talk about the essay coming up. And then we have a video lecture and then back to Zoom and then one more video lecture and then it's the exam. This semester went really fast. So we only have um, four classes left after this one, which go Zoom, video lecture, Zoom, video lecture. Okay. Um, so there any questions or I think I designed it this way I can't remember exactly what I was thinking, but I, I thought to myself, the video lecture works pretty well for giving content for composition. So we, we didn't do a Zoom lecture since week three, but having two Zoom lectures at the end enables you to talk to me about the essay and for me to give more specific advice on how to build that essay. So basically week 12, a uh, week 11, is going to be about the outline in week 13 will be about the um, finalizing your paper and getting it ready to send it to me and then 14 will be the end be the last lecture before the exam which will include of course some review um, but you will be finishing up your paper and handing it in we didn't take any we didn't take any vacation days so remember those vacation days that everybody else will be having lecture we will not. So there, there is a makeup week at the end. Yeah, that week, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, that will be the makeup week, but we will have no makeup on the Tuesday and Friday. We haven't stopped. We went right through the holidays, as you know. So those are free days for you to study. So we will be done one week early. And I think um, we're going to have in-person exams. So you'll have to come to the uh, university for the exam. And that will happen uh, the week after the makeup. And that will be fine because um, that's when the exams are supposed to be scheduled. So our, our exam would potentially, this is Tuesday, it'll be 
16, 17. Our exam will be on the 18th. We'll see, we'll see about that. I'll check the um, I'll check the schedules and everything. <clears throat> some people are coming from out of town, and I had an issue with some students not being not wanting to come. Um, you know, one week earlier. Usually, people want to do their exams as early as possible and get out. But since you're coming back, some of you to do your exams, it's probably not that helpful. Anyway, we can talk about this in Zoom. It's a better place to deal with these administrative details. Okay, um, so the next page, on page 35, you've got the modal auxiliaries, examples, could, should, ought to, has to, must, and of course the, the negative forms, doesn't have to, shouldn't, can't, or must not. And as they have those inverted triangles there on the page, you can see that goes from weakest to strongest. So here's a quick little response. Dear editor, I agree with Bill Adams' response in his recent letter saying that people should have to, don't have to, excuse me, don't have to ride their bicycles into town. Um, you have to fill these in, actually. However, there's one problem with this idea. The roads in town are so narrow and full of cars that you can't ride safely on them. If people are going to ride bicycles into town, the city <clears throat> must make some bike paths for people to use. This is what's going on in Toronto right now. Some people don't like it, but um, for coronavirus purposes, it's good because uh, cycling is something you can do and stay away from other people. It's exercise. Uh, as long as you don't get hit by a car because um, bikes are technically vehicles and they um, need their own space, but cars don't give them that space. So bike lane is usually a good idea to separate the two types of vehicles. Motorists have created the problem. Oh, sorry. Maybe the city could charge a small additional tax on fuel to pay for the bike paths. Motorists have created the problem, so motorists should pay for the solution. The city doesn't have to support bicyclists like Bill Adams by building more bike paths. That doesn't sound right. The city ought to. It's her recommendation at the end. The city ought to support cyclists like Bill Adams by building more bike paths. Melissa Green, Parkville. This reminds me of one of the conversation students' <coughs> story in the midterm. Told about um, a Korean guy who thought he could predict English sentences just by reading the first half of a sentence. Um, and then he came across a police officer and he didn't read the second half of a sign and he made the wrong decision. Uh, similarly, that last sentence, you had to read the whole sentence before you could choose um, which, w whether you wanted the affirmative or the negative. And given Melissa's stance, when she says, I agree at the end, um, at the end of her paragraph, she should be saying the same thing, not I disagree, should be I agree. The city ought to support cyclists like Bill Adams. Right. So she's following up and she's giving an opinion based on somebody else's opinion. So there's agreement. Um, and she's using affirmative and negative modal auxiliaries to do that. So read that little section, but you don't have to do any homework um, because I'm going to assign some homework like I said, in our class this week, which will be due next week, and we have Zoom as well. And that's a wrap, I think. Um, hopefully, microphone will be, I'll be standing up next time because I prefer that. But today, you got the talking head version. Thank you for your patience, as usual, and understanding. Um, obviously, I don't plan on having technical difficulties, but they do occur. So um, we do only have five, four or five classes left, looks like. Yes, once I do the video lecture, there's only four lectures left. So have a great day, and I will see you once again this week and next week, of course, on Friday morning. I will see you on Zoom. Have a good day.